were talking to John Wagner of the uh, Toledo Blade. He uh, covers the Bowling Green football team. John, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing pretty well. Uh, well, spring football is in the books uh, for Tennessee and for Bowling Green. Uh, what's your thoughts going into summer and fall uh, with the Bowling Green football team? Well, Bowling Green had kind of an interesting spring in that they had a quarterback battle, even though they brought back the starting quarterback from a team that had won eight games, won their league's division title, and won a bowl game. And the reason that is because the guy who won a MAC title and led him to a bowl game the year before was injured in the first game. So they have two veteran quarterbacks that they needed to uh, sort things out with. Uh, there also was a lot to be done on defense. Unfortunately there, it wasn't a matter of having choices to make between a bunch of people. It was sorting out a bunch of new folks and figuring out who's going to fill spots. Well, this is a Bowling Green offense uh, that, that averaged about 30 points, right at 30 points a game last year, and uh, but gave up about 33-and-a-half to the opponent. But what's your take on the offense coming back? Uh, do you think it's going to be about the same? And, and the defense, do you think it's going to get better? Well, let's talk about the offense first, Dan, because they bring back every starter except the tight end, and they run a Baylor five-receiver set, so that tight end didn't necessarily start every game, uh, which means basically they have everybody back. They're going to be in the second year of this Baylor offense under Coach Dino Babers. So in that sense, they expect to be better offensively and way more productive in that spread offense. Now, having said that, the defense, as I mentioned, lost a lot of guys. They lost and all over the field. They lost two starting linebackers, three starting defensive backs. Uh, they lost a defensive end, and I believe they are going to be missing a defensive tackle. So that job has been to figure out who the replacements are on defense. Also, uh, BG got a new defensive coordinator, and so in other words, they're learning a new scheme, new terminology, and, and new responsibilities. So that was that was the main order of business in the spring, is figuring out the defense. Uh, kind of talk about the bowl game last year. Of course, uh, going to Montgomery, playing in the Crampton Bowl against South Alabama, which is kind of like their backyard being in-state. Just kind of talk about that 33-28 to victory and how it kind of propelled into the offseason. It, it was a huge win, Dan. I, I can't underestimate how big that win was. They needed to come with a good taste in their mouths. They needed to find a way to end the season on a high note, and they were able to do it. And it was especially interesting in that they they landed the first punch in that game and got up quickly by two touchdowns. South Alabama came back, and as you mentioned, that, that basically was an hour or two-hour drive for them while BG had to basically come, you know, across the country from – from Ohio to uh, Montgomery, but they hit them with a long pass play for the game-winning touchdown. I mean, you talk about landing a knockout punch, it was huge, and it gave them a much, much more positive vibe going into the offseason. Well, have you had time to kind of look at Tennessee uh, this early on? I guess get now that we're in the month of May, it's kind of – Kind of getting to the point where uh, you got you have some magazines coming out and people are already talking about summer workouts into fall camp. Have you had a chance to look at Tennessee and uh, see what kind of team that they that they they will put on the field at LP Field in Nashville? Uh, I watched a little bit of their spring game, but I mean all of, all you need to know if you're Bowling Green is that they're tremendously talented and they're really well coached. Uh, Butch Jones is a guy that BG fans are going to be familiar with because he got his first coaching job at Central Michigan, which is in BG's league. And then from there he went down to Cincinnati, which is still in Ohio and a competitor for BG in terms of recruiting. So we've we've seen plenty of Butch and know what a good coach he is and what a successful coach he's been. So, you know, 
didn't really need to exactly put any film in the projector to figure out that Tennessee's going to be really good. Are you surprised at all of, of how well that Butch Jones has recruited at Tennessee with, with two great and working on a third great recruiting class at Tennessee? Not at all. Not at all. Because, again, going back to his backstory, he was at Central Michigan and replaced Brian Kelly there. Brian Kelly had built Central Michigan up to a, from a struggling team to the verge of success, and then Butch Jones took him over the top and, and got them to several bowl games and then had the same success at Cincinnati. I, he's young, he's energetic, he's, I, I, I mean, I, I think the world of him. I think very highly of him. And I, so, in other words, no, I'm not the least bit surprised. And I, I, I mean, I'm watching from Ohio, but I still think the best is yet to come for him in the Tennessee program. Well, how how much of a surprise and, I guess, kind of shocking uh, of how Bowling Green kind of, I guess you could say, backed into playing Tennessee at the Titan Stadium in Nashville uh, due to UAB. Uh, UAB was going to play Tennessee in Nashville until UAB had their program kind of shut down. What's your thoughts on that, and how did it kind of transpire that, that Bowling Green just kind of snuck in there and, and took over for UAB to play Tennessee? Well, I'm glad you asked that because it's it's an interesting story also from BG's perspective. Um, it, when you're in the Mid-American Conference, your typical non-conference schedule, you're going to get four games. You're trying to pick a game you can win that's, you know, usually a home game against a lower-level team, whether it's 1AA or D2, and you pick up a game against a big-name opponent for the payday, in the past, BG has played Florida, they've, I mean, Ohio State. They've played all over the place. So you have one of those usually. And then you pick up a home game and a road game that may be a challenge, but you might be able to win. And one of BG's games coming into this season was against, I believe, South Carolina State, which is from the MEAC. Well, South Carolina State had to pull out of their game with BG to play in another game early in the season, a, a preseason bowl game in, Atlanta, in uh, Orlando, I believe. You may Don't quote me on that, but I, I know they had to pull out. Okay. And so PG was looking for an opponent at the same time Tennessee was, so that became a marriage of convenience where PG fills in that hole for Tennessee and, you know, then has its, its – 12 games. Now, the tricky thing is, the reason I bring up the South Carolina State part of it is Bowling Green just has a knee grinder of a non-conference schedule coming up. I mean, they, they open up with Tennessee, then they play Maryland of the Big Ten, their home game is against Memphis, which was a bowl team from the American Conference, and then they play at Purdue, another Big Ten team. So, they, they have really by adding this Tennessee game, they have really given themselves a difficult non-conference schedule. Well, being in the state of Ohio up there, uh, ha- has the UAB football uh, being shut down and then I guess some of the, the information coming out after that uh, saying basically false reports to shut down the program, has it been has it been in the news up that way? A little bit, a little bit, and it was kind of funny that when UAB – you mentioned the bowl game against South Alabama when UAB was first shutting down. There was a lot of connections between that school and South Alabama. They added a few players. They added a coach. South Alabama did from that were departing UAB. So we heard more about it as it was first happening. But I mean, that's any way you slice it. That's just not a good thing for college football, and it just. It's a frustrating and a disappointing thing, especially when you consider that it's happening in Alabama of all states. I mean, that's a state that, I mean, they love their football, their, their college football. So to see that happening was was really a head shaker. Well, John, uh, thank you for taking a few minutes uh, today to talk uh, Bowling Green football.